Hey everyone, my name is Sean Wright, Lead Product Evangelist at Kentico. And in this Experience by Kentico Technical Spotlight, we're going to learn the basics of Experience's continuous integration tools and developer workflow so that you and your team can share code and database changes through source control. Let's jump over to a project that I already have set up. Traditionally, source control tools like Git have enabled developers to share code and configuration changes in their project with their teammates. But what happens when a developer wants to share database schema changes or data record changes with their teammates? How do they track those changes? How do they share them? What's the developer workflow? What tools do they use? All these questions are answered by Experience by Kentico's continuous integration functionality. It lets developers serialize database schema and data record changes to the file system to be tracked by source control and provides tools to allow those changes to easily be integrated into your teammates project. If you'd like to learn how to set up an experience by Kentico project, like the one I have here, check out one of our previous technical spotlight videos, which will be linked in the description. For now, let's jump over to this project and see how continuous integration works. <clears throat> so when you want to work with continuous integration in an Experience by Kentico project, the first thing you'll want to do is go to settings in your application, synchronization, continuous integration, and make sure the enable continuous integration checkbox is checked. This will tell Experience to track all the changes to database schema and record changes and make sure those get serialized to the file system so that they can be tracked by source control. So once that's checked, the next thing you're going to want to do is probably make sure that you're on a branch so that you are committing any of these changes to your branch to share through a pull request or to share with another developer that's working on the same uh, functionality that you are. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new branch and we'll call this feature articles. And now that I'm on that new branch, I'm going to go over to the content types application and I'm going to open up the article content type and I'm going to add a new field and this will represent a schema change in the database. And we'll call this field article subheading. And we'll just make this a normal text field, subheading, and text input. Go ahead and save that. And so now, if I navigate to the Content Hub and open up one of my article content items, like this one, and create a new version, we can see down here at the bottom, there's going to be a new subheading field. And I'll go ahead and add a new value here. For example, call this one. This is a great article. I'll save that and publish it. And if we go over to VS Code, what we're going to see is that Git has identified there's a bunch of changes. And all those changes are going to be in the app data CI repository folder. And those are going to be changes both to the database schema, so the article content type itself, and then all the articles that are um, that type of content. So I can open up one of these, for example, and we can see that this article has a new subheading. This is a great article. So there's that content that I added. But we also see that there's a new subheading uh, element here, which represents the schema change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit all of these changes to source control. And I'll say uh, article content type update. I'll commit this and I'll go ahead and push it up. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch over to another project, which is attached to a separate database, but it's connected to the same source code um, through Git. And 
And so here you can see I have a different project open. This is Spotlight Coworker. So I'm pretending to be my coworker. And I'll go ahead and synchronize source control. And I should be able to now check out the feature articles branch. And if we go into the app data folder in the CI repository, under documents and open up the article beverages explained, I should be able to see my subheading here. But this subheading is not yet in my application. So if I actually open up my experience by Kent Go Dancing Goat application and go to content types and take a look at article, we can see that there is no subheading uh, field here. And if I go back to the content hub, my coffee beverages explained content item is obviously not going to have that field here at the bottom. So how do we get those uh, serialized database changes into my project that my coworker would have just made? Well, we can do this using experiences CI tools. And so I'm going to open up uh, my terminal here and I'm going to stop my application from running. And I am going to run a pretty simple command here. And this command is .NET run dash dash KXP CI restore. And this is going to tell experience to take the continuous integration repository that I have here under the app data folder and deserialize that into the database and update all the database records. So I'm going to run that. And what we should see is that all the articles were updated and the article content type was updated as well. So now I can run my application again. And when this starts up, we can jump over to the browser and I will go back to content types and open up the article and we can see the subheading field is here. And if I go back to the content hub and open up this article and scroll down to the bottom, we'll see that it has its subheading. So that's how you can share database schema and record changes with your coworkers. Um, normally these types of changes would be coordinated with some code changes to take advantage of that new content that you're modeling in the database, maybe a widget or some rendering of a page would then use that subheading field that I added. So if you had a pull request, you'd see a mix of uh, the XML file changes in the CI repository and also maybe some C sharp or razor changes. But for now we're just sharing the database changes um, through this project. So there's a lot more functionality behind uh, the continuous integration capabilities in the product. And if you want to learn more about those, you can go to our documentation docs.experience.io forward slash XP. And then in the menu, open up developers and admins, CICD, and go to continuous integration. And there is a lot of great information here explaining all the technical details of how the continuous integration functionality works, the ways that you can customize it, and uh, some recommendations for how to work with it with your team. Thanks for watching. Stay subscribed so that you can keep learning the skills you need to build amazing digital experiences with Experience by Kentico. And stay tuned for the next Experience by Kentico Technical Spotlight.